Triple X, right? This is Triple yep. X headquarters. You, so, the rest of the world wants to know, or at least the country, where is the Chinese sweatshop around here? That's what everybody wants to know. We've heard it's here. You're looking at it. Oh, <laughs> is it built in China? What is the process? 100%. 100%. So, this is what comes in, yeah. in like, here. This is just us fabbing on stuff here. Like, this is a car for Logan McCandless. So it's just like little things, you know, weld on nuts, change the body for the body he's putting on it, cut safety bars out, whatever, just kind of whatever anyone does. But like it comes here 100% race ready. When we were at Dirt Cup, when we had Dirt Cup here, Atar had crashed a car. Nobody was even here and we took one off the shelf. He took it, went to PA and raced. Wow. Like, so we didn't do nothing. Now, is there any kind of QC so, when y'all so get them in there? So that, that's it's the very thing. funny. So one of the prominent drivers in... Sprint car racing. And yep. I ain't saying his name because he asked me not to say his name. He went to Knoxville. Yeah. And a lot of people thought this guy had a chance to win. He got two brand new chassis from yep. a prominent manufacturer that isn't, you know, welded in, in, yep. in America or in China. Yeah. And both same, both everything. He's the top name, so he's getting the, the main stuff. Yeah. And he was horrible on his qualifying night. And all it was one of the bigger shockers of Knoxville Nationals. Yeah. And they switched chassis because the two chassis, and it just changed. On Hard yeah. Knocks night, he performed well. The reasoning was, when asking in conversation, was two chassis that were supposed to be the same yeah. were everything but. Yeah. So it's a little difficult for y'all, I'm assuming, since they are coming welded. But how uh, do you QC <clears throat> these machines? Like, Because I go over there. Like I go, you, you've been to China, yeah. So you are times. the Joe Biden, yeah. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But yeah, so like you know, there's a process, right? And the and the biggest thing I would say is the repeatability of stuff, right? So <clears throat> when you're building it, like let's say, like I have stuff here to build cars. Like I've got right. Willie Kane's that one thing he has that's a lot different than everybody else's, right? right? Like, stuff like that. So y'all do have jigs, <clears throat> yeah. Like that's my stand up jig up there, right? Like I could build a car, right? Now if I build a car, I'm one guy. You know, me and Mel building the car, and it's going to take way too long. We're never going to make any money, and we're going to, you know, but we can take our time with that one car and turn it in, you know, way more meticulous on every little bit of detail on it, right? And that's going to make it, let's say, perfect, right? Right. Now, you want to start cranking out cars like us and Maxim and J&J and all these dudes that crank out 100-plus cars a year if you're doing that. Right. That's hard, right? But with our process, like, it's... It's not a racer building the car, right? Mostly in all those other scenarios, it's somebody that's like a racer building the car. This, and like we're, we're, with us, it's like, hey, here's the, the order you weld it in. Here's the order of how you put the pieces in. Here's the order of how all of these things happen, right? So I feel that makes us probably more consistent than anyone else. Then you want to say like, okay, hey, here's a build sheet, right? Like you, you buy a car from anyone else. Here's your build sheet. Well... Now your steering bar could be at different heights, your motor bar could be at different heights. You want a short X brace, you want to move forward, you want the V's doing this, you know, you want all these things different, right? So now you're kind of moving stuff around all the time. So say you're taking a car and like, okay, now we put this in there. Oh man, that was at Bob's spot, you know, like, hey, cut that back out. Like, let's put this back in, right? Now, obviously, you know, if we had a problem and we have to cut stuff out, that's just what you have to do because you got to fix it. Right. But... You know, our cars are welded the same every time, which everyone has their process of welding it, you know? Right. <clears throat> but there could be different scenarios. Well, like, our car comes one way. Like, we have an 8740 and an 8840. One-inch raised rail. That's how every car comes. Nothing changes. Now, if you want to change something, do something, or any of that, that's something we'll do here. Now, whether it's going to be still good after we cut and grind on it and hack on it and do stuff on it, right. you it's know, different. it could be different. But as far as a car that comes, you know, like... like Anthony Macri runs our stuff, right? He's probably bought 30 to 40 cars over his time of doing this, right? We changed four Zeus tabs on the car. That's what we do. So, you know, in a way, there is a little more QC involved just because there is no kind of like special chassis or special Correct. deal or, or somebody who's a big fan yeah. who's doing the cars. It's it's some guy overseas yeah. who and doesn't it, have a biasness. Correct. So, like... Our tube has to be this height. Our tubes have to be this height. This bar has to be in this place. This has to be in these. So all these things where, you know, you, you look at a guy with a jig or something, it might be this little thing, right? Well, over there, it's built. Like, if they have to use a forklift to put the wing jig on, that's what they're going to do. Because, like, they're going to make sure that that never moves, that there's never a problem, there's, you know, and this is where it goes. So, like, 
it's a little different than how we would do it, just how we think right. and how we do stuff right. and stuff like that. And you said you've actually been to yeah. China. Yeah, like uh, I go, I go and work in the factory go with all of them. And do they even know what y'all are? Is it the yep. same guys doing the welds? Is yeah, it the same. So people? we, so like the fa- the factory has a lot of different things that they do in that, but there's an area that's our part of it, right? And it's ISO certified factory. They start at eight a.m. They get off at six thirty. They get an hour and a half lunch. You can work five or six days a week, depending on what you want to do. Right. You know, so it's not like it's, you know, you can go to the places where there's the sweatshops of the, you know, right. bad stuff, right? But that's not what we're about, We right? got those sweatshops in America, too. Yeah, so. You know, that's not what we do, right? So, for us, it's just, you know, they're, they're about repeatability and making mass amounts of it, right? Which is kind of <clears> funny, you know, not saying that, you know, Maxim J&J is just some, you yeah. know, rednecks in a shop building chassis, but compared to like what you just said where it's a certified factory there's certain levels of welding yeah. you have to have a certain feel, a yeah. level of welding skill to be there yeah i'm assuming there is a standard qc in that building yep. just to have the certification yeah like it actually comes with a tag on it that's marked off by the guy that went through and made sure everything was good on their end you know we just on our end take our time to just go through all the same stuff again to make right. sure you know to make sure you know whether they missed it or something you know like obviously like now we don't really have but like the growing pains early on when we started they're you know like oh man hey this shock tower is welded on crooked well if it's crooked every car is going to be crooked right because that's jig that way and something might have happened to the jig or something like that so then you fix it right but now now that we've done you know we've almost done it 20 years now so now it's the repeatability, the understanding of like the factory, knowing what they're building and all that stuff, like it's just smoother right. now. Well, and it's got a standard, it seems like, yeah. too. We also make our own stuff. So, like, basically, everything we have for aluminum components, your torsion arms, your bird cages, your steering arms, and just all of those pieces, we make those here because it's just something easier for us to, to not have to. We can QC it, we can check it, we can make sure everything's exactly, you know, when the, the bore size of a birdcage bearing has to be within half a thousandth of a second you know everybody wants to say that we make them overseas and stuff like that well if i make it overseas and they come to me and they're all a thou too small and the bearing slides in now i got a hundred of them that's worthless to me right Right. so it's easier for us to make it here to produce it and stuff like that and then y'all had like a parts house up front it looks like at this station yeah we we do a full we're a full retail shop so even this like we sell tires for our midget, our midget series around here, the Focus Midgets, we sell tires. We sell everything. Everything, everything you would need to, to race. I guess the only criticism this year that y'all may have received, <laughs> it seems like the China deal is recurrent, yeah. but the Bill Bay Baylog log. situation. Yeah. Is, that, is there any detail on that? Was that an altered piece? I mean, because nope. sometimes people wreck their cars and they go and get them clipped up <clears throat> somewhere else. Yeah. You no, know, like and that, that could be playing a factor. Like, that was just a bad circumstance of situation, right? It like, was a very weird way it hit and all you know, this. You don't see that often at Eldora, right? A car flying sideways, halfway upside down, and this and that. You know, and we did a bunch of, you know, the outlaws contacted us. We did all these things, right? And we talked about it. We got metal from that car. We tested it. It was all okay. The metal was all okay. Right, because it didn't exactly. break at a Walmart. No. It, break, it just on broke the bar. The, yeah, it just broke the tube and stuff like that. So, you know, there was people questioning that. And and so, you know, I would say <clears throat> I, have, I have a whole stack of American tube over there I buy. Because that's what I can get here. I can't buy raw material from China. You can't do that. Right. So, without paying more money for Tariffs. it. Or, you know, like, there's a bunch of shit with that. But, like, I buy American Tube. It comes with a it comes with a certification every time I buy it. That, hey, this metal is this, this, and this, right? I take that tube, because I test tube. Like, our, you know, if we cut something out of a car or, you know, whatever we're doing, I'll take that material and I'll go get it tested. Well, if, I'll also take the american tube that i just got i'll cut 18 inches off of it and i'll send it to get tested well if i look at the metal cert of what i have for my american tube or wherever it is german tube bentler tube you know any of those right stuff, they right? just siphon it in here and put a usa flag it, it's on it's not it. even the yeah, same exactly. as what it's certified as right. you know and i'm like sitting there and it's like you, you guys all want to mf me right. for, for building cars in china but yet you're buying tube that's just got a stamped thing that the hey, manipulation. hey we're doing inch yeah. three it's only three print that one off you know the manipulation of made in the usa yeah you know and and it's not like it's bad tube you know but if it's like if it says it's going to test here and it's two three percent everywhere different you didn't really send me this tube is you know i mean it's not like i mean we got the walmart examples but there's yeah. not like a 
great of, well, made in the USA means it's this much better than made in China <laughs> is this much better. It's, there's really not, it's yeah. just a, a, a perspective, yeah. you know, really. You know, and, and like the, in that part of it, like you can go to China and you can get, you can probably go find somebody to build you a race car in China for 50 bucks. Right. If you drop it off of a foot table, it's probably junk, you right. know, like, cause, but if you go to the right places and you deal with the right people, and it really, it comes back to like Cal Hertzen, the original guy that was part of this, you know, going over there and finding the right people in the right places and, and networking in a roundabout way with people that go do business over there. You know, our factory does stuff for <coughs> Ducati. They build Easton baseball bats. They do, you know, they do whatever they need to do, but they do it to where if you buy an Easton baseball bat from in America, you're like, I got one of the best baseball aluminum Easton bats or, or on the planet. Or you buy a Ducati, like, oh man, that guy's, luxury. That guy's yeah. got a Ducati, right? Right, right. That you, just because you don't know that it's made in China, you think it's the shit. Right. You find out it's made in China, it's not the shit. Now, you can also basically buy shitty stuff, right? Right, right. Like you I know. said, the Walmart examples. Yeah. The like dollar you, store. Yeah, like you can buy that stuff or find those places that do that and stuff like that. Right, right. So this is just basically our manufacturing side of... And, and what's little, the boat, boat for? Boat what, what, what's going on here? I just put a new motor on it. So yeah, this is well... This is Mel? That's Mel. This world-renowned hair farmer. Really? Yeah. What the hell is he doing? So this is so basically like all these like those are midgets that are going to convert into into lightning sprint 1200s, mm -hmm. and then these are like the uh, mechanless cars. He's got 12 of them. Wow, coming to him. So these are just you know the safety bars he cuts out, parts and pieces, and so this is the dirty room, the smoke room. Yeah, <laughs> our stuff, mill, lathe, just stuff to you know we do a little bit of everything. And then these are these fresh in or yeah, so these are all brand new going out. Like those are the done cars for McCandless. We just got a couple left to do. Hopefully ship this. Is he week. planning to race these cars for years or uh junk a few? You know, it just depends. You he know? does put it on the edge. He does like McCandless, to do that. he's got a right foot. Yeah. Right foots and, can end up in and, walls. Yeah. But like yeah, like so he's getting twelve. Eight of them are actually his, four are for buddies of his. Oh, okay. So to combine the shipping, because obviously we're out here in the middle of nowhere, right? We're in the upper left. There's, yeah. There's no right shipping's not it, as cheap. Yeah, you know, so we have dealers scattered throughout the country and, and stuff like that to where it makes it easier for guys to right. to get stuff and because obviously it's you know from here to PA or New York or anywhere, anywhere. on the East Coast. Really, I mean, from the West Coast yeah. to Nebraska is your closest. You know, and even, Minnesota maybe. Yeah, even for us to ship stuff to like California and stuff like that, you know, it's tough. It's still a thousand miles most of the time right. or something, right? We have, you know, we sell wheels. So we got Kaiser Weld Sanders wheels. Those are basically all those pallets are basically front axles. Oh wow! Front axles ready to go. We sell about. Three to four thousand. Are those prefab too? Yep. Okay. China. Wow. So they're all you know. There's different things, right? There's you know we do micros, midgets, and sprints, different versions of all of that. Whether you want it black or you want it plated or whatever, whatever you got to do. So we got we got lots of that. You know, we, you know, some guys buy ten at a time. You know, because it's obviously a very disposable item that right that, that can happens. get bent up pretty yeah. easily. Yeah. So. So, yeah. And all the components are a little cheaper for a triple X, right? Not yep. just the chassis. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, when you buy nerfs and you buy axles and you buy, you know, even our aluminum component stuff, we try and, you know, it's obviously hard to machine it here in Washington and be super competitive price wise, but we'll always try and be the cheapest, you know, the cheapest. at the end of the day. Now, so it's funny enough, the, the sprint car chassis itself, I actually was saying it on my show today. You know, Chase Johnson just said his incident. We've seen Angelique Bell with the fire situation. Yep. Um, you know, Swindell, Alex Bowman. I mean, go down the list. Yep. I, I think there is a need for a new sprint car. I think the design, there's not enough room. I mean, these are yeah. the same. It's the same base design as the, yeah. the 80s, you know, let's yeah. say down it's tube. An down tube it's down, an 85 gambler. Well, down tubes was the innovation, yeah. and then ever since then, it's yeah. that's it, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if you can get more room in that cockpit with 88. I don't think no. you can. You've no. got to go to, I was saying, 92 like, or 94, uh -huh. you could work and play, but yeah, like you the, are pretty constrained in the design. Yeah. Yeah, like there's, you know, you, you know when you talk to... 
let's say an IndyCar guy or a NASCAR guy or somebody from a different sport, right? Even the dirt it, late mall guys told me they've been innovating. When when you when you look at it, you go, the first thing everyone says is like, well, it needs to be bigger, right? You, you know, the car needs to be bit. You need more room around you. Right. And There's stuff no like, room, you know. And that's you know. And the hardest part, I would say, in that, right? You know, obviously for us, it would be a big, a whole thing, a right? Big switch. But that's fine. If they wanted to do that, that's what we'd have to do, right? But the hardest part is to say, say you're the outlaws or you're high limit or you're any touring series or this and that. If you mandate a car that now is way different than what, let's say, today's car, how many cars are you going to get to help your support right. your series, right? Well, I even said it. Yeah. High limit would have to, they'd probably be the close to have a situation like that. Yeah. You know, because when they get their charter teams, they'll have 10 guaranteed charters. Correct. And then if you mandate it, you at least have 10 rolling out with that yeah. chassis. I don't think that expense would significantly increase. I mean, you know, that's well, what most people are worried about. If you go to a new car, it's going to be so much more expensive and it's going to yeah. price the little guy out. But, I mean, you're never going to get to late mall costs. I mean, late mall chassis <laughs> rolling are, what, 55, 60,000? Yeah. But they have space. Yeah. They have bars. They have, you know, materials to add up that amount yeah. of money. Even if you go to, like you, I was saying to somebody, Say this is the hundred percent scale. We just need to go to like one hundred and fifteen scale. Yeah. Just increase it a little bit more so you yeah. can have some collapsible areas. There's no when things go wrong here. There's nowhere for that guy no. to go. No, especially like you know, like even like even a guy my size. I'm not that tall. Right. We're not you talking know, about Trey Osborne it, who's six six yeah, or something. Right. Like it's tight for me. Right. Now when you're smaller, let's say you know. Brad, the typical Brad, sprint car Brad, driver. Gravel, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the the jockeyish type racer. You know. You kind of have that room around you. You know, even a guy like Aaron Reitzel had a situation where he crashed at Knoxville like a couple weeks ago or however long ago where he came in for the side and hit hit uh, Bu- Buback or whatever for the lead or whatever they crashed. Yes, they yes, hit. yes, yes. So <clears throat> dirty, now, dirty move. We have to say dirty. You have to say it too. No, yeah. you don't have to say so it. Now, so now that out, the, the upright that we put in to support the top of the cage, mm-hmm. he hit the front of Buback's car with that bar. Now, we have full containment seats to make everything all better, right? Well, and that's innovative. The seats, <laughs> yeah. the equipment has, but the car hasn't. But now the car, now that seat's bigger to make the driver safer, but the car didn't. Now that outlaw bar gets smashed into the side of his seat, mm-hmm. bends his seat, twists them all around, he gets out and he can't breathe. Wow. Well, why'd that happen? Well, it's because you don't if, have if, he, had, to go. if he had five inches on the right side yep. of the headrest on his seat... That wouldn't have happened. Or look at Wayne Johnson. Yeah. His arms ripped in half and shit yeah. because there's no room. Yeah. There's no distance between the out yeah. exterior and the interior of these cars. Yeah. Uh, but a new sprint car scares people. Yeah. And but that, it, it shouldn't, you and know? That, and, that, and I would say the biggest problem with that is just nobody wants to go to an outlaw or high limit show and see 15 cars, right? Because there's definitely, I would say there's 60 to 80 guys that are going to buy brand new cars every year. Every right? year. Every year they buy brand new cars. So those guys are fine. But they're kind of scattered all throughout the country. You know, you go to PA, you'd probably have a good showing, or right. maybe Ohio, or you know, like you know. But you come to some of these places, right? And but I mean, but I think that, a main that, reason I think a main reason late models are so healthy, yeah, is because all shapes and sizes are in them. Yeah, if you're not a gravel, if you're not a sweet size. Yeah. You don't even feel comfortable in these cars enough <laughs> yeah. to to really push them. Yeah. You know, I mean, so if yeah. you could open up a car that would allow a little bit of a bigger, not even a little bit of, you yeah. know, just an average yeah. looking dude yeah. to race it, who knows how many people would invest into going into sprint yeah. car racing. Because the, the problem is just everybody uniting to make the same thing, right? right? Like agreeing that this is what the direction we need to go. Every every series understanding that this is what you need to mandate or, or phase in or whatever, however right. they need to do it, right? But... What would be some uh, changes that you would see if you were to take it to, I was saying on the show, 92, 94, you would have to go on the length to, to really open it up in length and width at least. Yeah, like the, the length part would be, you know, like right now, basically almost everybody's going to be a 40 to a 41 inch setback. Mm-hmm. You know, that's kind of, you know, if you, if you went, you know, just if you take a guy that's sitting in a 40 inch car and you put him in a 41 inch car, you sit in it and you're like, Oh man, like the steering wheel's way out there, right, you know, right, and right. it's just there's a lot to that stuff to where, you know, if they mandated a 41 inch car, it'd probably help a bunch of different scenarios, you know. But at the same time, you know, it's in the wrong part of the car, right? Like you're expanding the cockpit, but the rear end's just as close to your ass right. as it was in so any when other you car. Compress down, you're just as bad <clears throat> to the hit. Yeah, like you're in the same scenario. So, <clears throat> you know, in reality, it should be 
the car should be three inches wider all the way around and you should have the rear end another two three inches further back and that should just be how it is but right. and then maybe some impact points that are designed to crash and yeah you know like, and, like, the, and the fuel systems aren't sfi certified we don't have certified fuel systems on these no. cars i mean anytime no. they try to go get them certified i mean fia i think the lowest grade they have something on the um the, not the saldanas but the atls yeah but it's like their most expensive tank that nobody buys yeah. but it's, but it's like we have a fuel cell or an explosion device on an impact point of the car like that yeah. when the car goes to flipping it's landing on the explosion device like nobody else is doing this yeah nobody would even think to do that right no yeah i, I mean but we do yeah we do there's, yeah, there's, there's a lot of and i think there's more obviously than just space you but, know there's a lot of it like uh uh mark chevalier built an aluminum 28 gallon tank yeah i did an interview with him after angelique bill and you see like how it contours with the down tubes of the basically the back of the car so like in a roundabout way you'd probably crash with that tank and it would be way better because like it's not sticking so far out the back or for aesthetics you could put a shell around it that looks like a traditional sprint car chat i believe the swindell car at knoxville had a similar situation where they had a shell but yeah like it's definitely things you know it's like it's hard to believe We've gone so long with ATL tanks flying off every time a guy flips, right? right? And, and we like, think a little bottle with a <clears throat> suppression deal is going to save the day. Yeah, like, like there's definitely a lot that needs to happen, right? But now, now say I come out and I go, hey, here's my new car. Here's all these things. It's going to be so much safer. It's so much better and all these things. You know, let's say not better, but <clears throat> a sprint car driver will hop in that car for one night. If he doesn't win that night... That's just junk. Throw it away. Like, right. I want to go back to what I know, right? Right. It has to be a new car. You'd have to base it. And it's doable. I think you could yeah. make, like, me and you got together, we make a prototype, and then we get a name to hot lap that prototype. You make a nice video. You sell yeah. it. You package it. You send it off. There'll be so much advocation for it. It would be like, why not? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, But media is manipulation. I talk about this all the time. <laughs> yeah. You're voting for Trump right now. I'm just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He said, yeah. <laughs> He said, yeah, but... But, yeah, the... Uh, presentation. It would need a lot yeah. of presentation to make it sell. Yeah, like, because I, I sit in, Not- you know, Knoxville normally has a chassis meeting every year at the Nationals or something, you know, every other year, you know, and we all sit in there, and at the end of the day, we didn't accomplish shit. Right. Really, when it gets down to it, you right. know, we talk about things, and we, mm-hmm. you know, but, you know, if if the outlaws aren't really feeling it, or, you know, the high limit's not feeling it, or whoever it, whoever it is, you know, if they're not thinking that's the way to go you just talk about it you shut the door and now we're just watching a race well i do yeah. feel like brad and them are a little more open-minded i would to change say, i would say it yeah. seems that way yeah in dealing with them <clears throat> yeah. and they're gonna have a, a chip to play yeah. you know on that but it, it, it is interesting but i would say but i would say they weren't gonna rest, mandate lifeline fire bottles but guess who sponsors the series right yeah it's, it's, it's an interesting way you know like there's always that shit right? it's always quick money it doesn't matter what it is if it's sprint cars or buying gas at the grocery store right or, but if like i was telling brad i texted him i said if sprint car racing has this big future a new car is coming regardless yeah it has to come nobody's yeah. nobody outside of this is going to see it and invest into that without yeah. there being a change you know and it's and it's one of those things like if we had a run for six months where nobody got hurt nobody didn't even care right? right now a guy gets hurt right Tony Stewart lost his leg off, you yeah, know, chopped in half, chopped yeah. in half, right? And it was all about restraining the rear end and like keeping the torque tube from coming out and yeah. building all these. It's things, like, do we right? have to wait for Kyle to get <clears throat> hurt to exactly. then do something? Exactly, you know what I mean? Like it's like something has to happen big. You know, Wayne Johnson down at Grace Harbor was running an ASCS show and got his re- leg ripped off. You no know, one they, cared. Nobody really cared, right? Tony right. Stewart goes and gets his leg ripped off. Then it's like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do about this? Everybody's coming out with these different things to like help protect it. Everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. A year later, nobody cares. They don't run that stuff. They don't care. Right. You know? Well, so, and, and they don't even mandate rock screens, which yeah. is pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. All that has to happen is a shot comes I, off. I got hit in the face with a caliper once. It's not fun. Right, right. You know? But anyway, I guess we could. <laughs> this should have been for the Knoxville meeting, but they didn't do anything. Yeah, you know? Right. I mean, come on. And then what are all those up there? Just more? So that's all brand new stuff ready to just be QC'd and worked on, depending on... You know, we do an 88 and 87, stand, what we'd call wedge car, but it's like basically standard height now. And we do an uh, Australian car that's another even taller because their rules are strict on head heights and stuff they like that. They got actual laws and a they, governing they, body. They got actual rules. So they do that. So basically for us to sell, you know, we weren't selling very many cars there. So basically we came up with, you know, with a, one of our dealers over there. It's like, hey, if you build this car taller, all these things, right? 
now we sell 150 cars a year in Australia, where we were selling 30 to 40. Yeah, because traditionally they would have to weld like a little extension bar on you'd, top of the you'd car. You'd always have to do something to make it work, to make it happen, basically. Right. So now we have a car that's basically race. You know, we, we drop our butt bar down because they have a rule for how hard, how high the rear end can go. So we make our butt bar to where it's it's drop down, right? It's got the little hoop in it, it's drop down. Yeah. And you're talking and, about that piece right there. Yeah, how it, how it hoops down, right? And that's an Australian thing. Basically, in Australia, they take your stops off, they jack the rear end up, and if it hits your seat, if anything hits your seat before it hits the bar or, you know, whatever allows it to hit your seat, like, you don't just get to go, like, hey, fix that next week. It's cool, man. Like, don't worry no, about you're it. you're not racing. You don't race, and you fix it until you want to try and come back and do it right. again. So, guys here, right, here's the here's the American side of racing, sprint cars. Oh, man, it hit my rear end. You know, say you're on a rough track or... Your your Corey Day at Chico, and you're just pounding that curb as hard as you can, and you get up over it, and it fucking bounces, or yeah. something happens, right? The rear end's gonna hit that bar. Well, a guy will see that and go like, "Hey, man, that rear end's hitting my bar. I'm losing drive. I'm not doing good. I'm something's wrong here. Cut that out and put a straight one in." Wow. And you go, okay, but you know that's like saving you, right? They're like, no, 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 it's, it's messing up my car. Yeah. Anthony Macri drives one with a bent down bar. Aaron Reitzel drives one with a bent down bar. Right. All of Bobby Allen's stuff's bent down bar. Right. Well, once again, if you had 92 or 94, you wouldn't have that bent down bar issue. You wouldn't again, have need it. Yeah. So that's why I still say it's back to design, but. You know, and then it, like some of the safety stuff comes just to the user, right? Like some guys will just like, no, man, I, want I don't the, want the rock screen. Yeah. I want this to be like this, <laughs> right. you know, yeah. and you're like, well, you, maybe you shouldn't, but. Right. But we don't have a governing body like Australia Correct. that can mandate and actually. You know, rate tracks, you know, yeah. over there, you know, tracks have a certain rating of safety. Yeah. If you don't meet a certain rating, you don't have a sprint car race. Yeah. You know, you got to have a license. You know, if you have a pit pass and you try to go buy a beer, they cut it off your wrist. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's just certain things over there that yeah. are admirable about how they operate. Yeah. Even though it's this big, bad government idea. We yeah. just got gung-ho, you know, mafias running ours, basically. <laughs> yeah. Technically, right? Yeah, I mean, roundabout way, yeah. We got little groups telling everybody what to do. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's it. Yeah, and so that's where that's where it's like, you know, Australia tomorrow could say, hey, this is the car you're going to be. Three people might complain about it, but the rest of them are just going to do what they're going to need to do so that they can race, right? Right, right. So all of our smaller components, you know, radius rods and spacers, throttle arms, pedals, motor plates, rock screens, all sorts of just all your little HRP trailer stuff, you know, anything you need to, to do your trailer and you know, himes and jam nuts and tie bolts, spindles, bars, bars, you know, every, you, know, you don't have any racers working here, please. do you? Pretty much. I think it's a requirement that you oh, have to race. You found any of them slipping tie in the pocket no, before? No, no, I've, no. I've heard of some other shops. Oh, yeah. They got some tie issues. Yeah. There's definitely guys, you know, the, the expensive stuff we hide a little bit, maybe not. Okay. Okay. Now. Okay. But no, we're pretty good here. You know, and then wheels and all your wheels related things. And this is all just AN fittings. You know, stuff like that. Different random, you know. Can, this is all fuel system stuff, winter stuff, brakes, Willwood, hmm. Stevie. Do you have uh, certain brands you use? Willwood, I guess, is your brake guy? <clears throat> we, just kind of whatever, you know. We don't really have like a one. Or the, you know, I sell Stevie Smith brakes. I sell Willwood brakes. I sell Winter's rears. I sell DMI rears. Okay. I sell Weld Kaiser Sanders wheels. and. Right. You know, there's some stuff that, you know, you know, I saw a quick car, auto meter, just in case, you know, just because <clears throat> a lot of people sell like, you know, like, oh, hey, I deal with this, you know, Bob, my buddy over here is my friend. So right. I buy his stuff and I won't buy anybody else's where we just try and, you know, if a guy comes in and he asks for it, it's something I don't have. I just put it in the back of my head like, hey, next time I'm going to order that, you know, right. like I bet you I sell eight different sets of front hubs. You know, wow. whether it's well DMI winners. So you are like a main parts <clears throat> person for this area, I guess, then too. We try to be, yeah. I mean, it seems like it. You have to have yeah, or you're selling this stuff or you yeah, want to ma- have the it. mafia restricts me a little bit on what I can oh, do. Oh my, there's always a mafia, is there not? <laughs> At least you ain't done with the Californians, you know. Yeah. The cartel. <laughs> yeah, right. <you> know? <laughs> you broke Joe. Oh my. You know about broke Joe. Huh? I sell lots to him. Oh, you do? Yeah. You and Broke Joe get along? Yeah. Is, is he, he deals a, with probably Skid up in the front office more than he does me, but... Mm. Is he as mean as the cartel puts him out to be? I don't think so. Okay. He just tells the truth. But <clears throat> this room is basically just solely 
assembly. Like, mm. if, if, and it could be something just as dumb as you know, like these arms are come came back from anodized, so you got to put a bolt in them with a washer, so the pinch has that. Mm. You know, just different, different things, different stages. Whether it's building the whole shifter or you know, some t- grip, you got grip a, tape a on water jet. So this, this is a laser etcher. Oh, okay. So basically, we use this for for branding logo, for Logan our logo and stuff, and you know whether we do it for someone else or we do it for us. You know, we can, we have the option to do it and. So yeah, basically it's, it's all just putting stuff together things hmm. to where, uh, you know, all the way, like people don't even think about it, putting grip tape on the heel block. Right. And yeah. it's more than just, you and, know, I, and I, and I probably sell 2000 heel blocks, 3000 heel blocks a year. Well, if I'm doing that, that's a, that's a day of work for a guy. Right. <laughs> you know, right. Like that's a yeah. lot of, it's a lot of cutting little. and so yeah, we, we basically have a full-time guy that is just assembling stuff, you know, making sure. You know, putting a spindle nut in the bag, making sure the washer's in there with the bolts and all that. and It's a little more QC than yeah. uh, you would... I bet you some don't do that. They're just like, all right, that's the pop. Yeah. That's the box that came in. Throw it in the in the panel there. Yeah, yeah. And this is basically... This is like just like top wing and nose wing hardware. We sell different versions of all that stuff. You okay. know, st- stuff to repair your... You know, we build chassis stands and then we sell the individual pieces for the chassis stand. Oh, or wow. wheel brakes or you do whatever, you know. Wow guys lose stuff all the time right or this and that and you know we do do it all all your 600 micro arms and spacers and so it's mainly sprint cars micros and midgets yeah like sprint cars are our biggest market we we've definitely been getting more traction with our midget you know and then the 600 feels a tough deal because i feel like if you're gonna if you're gonna sell 600s and you're gonna be a big 600 player micro player in the game you gotta have one. You gotta be at all the events. You gotta. It's very clicky. It's yeah, weird. Like like in two thousand, the brand war there is just weird. Yeah, like two, a lot of bad blood. Yeah, like it's just like two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Like I ran. We had our own house car micro when we first came out with it. This and that. And I, I went to Tulsa every year, and we won a driller one year, and and we went to the six hundred nationals of Visalia, California, and we won that. Well, we won that, but we were two pounds light, so we didn't win that. Oh, okay. <clears throat> but, you know, there's things like that, right? And we went and we raced all these places and we were around. And when people bought them, I was around to be able to talk to people about what I was doing and this and that. To where then it was like, okay, you know, I want to focus more on my sprint car side of things. Well, then, like, a micro t- kind of tapers off, right? So it's like you got to almost be there or you got to have a marquee guy that's a, f- you know, like Flood or uh, Galusha or... You know, guys that are Hagopian, who's who, who's doing that like six hundred thing, right? Like Hagopian messed around with micro or sprint cars, or you know maybe like Flood messed around, with, but really they're like micro guys, yeah, and yeah. they and they understand the micro stuff, and they get, established names, yeah, and they and they like you know now you're now if you are Frank Flood and you want to go race anywhere, you you're you're a contender for it. Then because you're a contender for it, now people want to know what you're doing. So then you're helping them, and then you know it just it morphs into like having a big clientele of people that right. are doing it. Now I have a micro; I, I might run it every other year, one time, you know, or something like that. But I don't race it, so it's not like it's not an easy sell to be like, "Oh yeah, man, this car's super good," but I don't race it. You right. know, it's easy for me to tell you a sprint car is badass because I have top level guys behind the wheel doing it winning you yeah. know you're the we're, million, the, we're, the, we're the only million dollar winner yeah, right let's say <laughs> million dollar winner it's true but yeah so it's things like that that definitely make it easier to sell sprint cars you know now we're our, our micro stuff we've we excel in selling into you know our northwest focus midgets here there's probably 70 cars around here for the focus midgets we probably have 45 50 of them or triple x's you go to like mid uh, the Midwest, Ohio, like with Chuck Taylor back there. He's started dealing them, kind of selling them a little bit. Now we probably have a good majority of them. So we've kind of like are working our way up, right? It was kind of the same thing when we started sprint car racing. You know, a 305 guy would be like, yeah, man, it's cheaper. Like, let's buy it, right? Right, right? You know, and you work your way up to getting those guys. So it's just trying to, you know, stay. I have a sprint car, I have a midget, and I have a micro, but it's like it's tough to race all those, right. work. You know, and, make and, it all and live in Washington. You know right. what I mean? Like, for me to go to, you know, even when like other micro guys around here, you want to go to Tulsa in January. We're, we're driving through the Rockies, and it's mm-hmm. January, and you don't know what you're gonna hit. You know, yeah. I've been there where it's t- minus twenty, blowing sixty, and you're mm-hmm. driving, you're driving along, and you're like, "Why am I doing this?" Like, right. 
It's 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 a, it's a questionable decision in life. Yeah, you know, it's easy. It's easy if you're in like that Midwest area, you just kind of pop down and you and, and you, you end go. up there. Yeah. You know, but it's a it's a commitment for us to to go really anywhere. You know, it's easy to fly somewhere, but to take a race car and and travel and to hold do all that ball game. Yeah. So yeah, and then basically, this is our shipping area. Got a full time guy with there. Then my wife's part time. That's got to be a hell to be a picker. Yeah, there's a. You ever had any incidents? Somebody fall off a ladder? No, no surprisingly enough, we've uh, we've ran into some stuff. But did how, you ever how, knock some knock them down? Hey, you want you see that rack right there? That like see that whole one right there? Right. <clears throat> Ask Cl Clint's kid Jesse when he worked here how that went. What happened? <laughs> I have no idea. He heard about it. I, no, I guess yeah, he didn't I'm, tell I'm sure Dad. He, he didn't tell Dad. I would say that was probably the most ever in my life I've seen Jesse like scared of like he had a fork he had a forklift and he had the beam up still because he put something up on the rack. Well he didn't lower it down far enough so he was backing out and he was just looking back and didn't realize that the fork was up and he hit that rack. And that rack was probably at a good 15, 20 degree oh, angle. God. Like this whole rack. That whole rack was like almost falling over it was like at that point where it was like if it would have been a, an inch more it would have fallen over but then it went boom and it slammed back wow and he did and he drove back forward he got for it's like i'm never driving the forklift again <laughs> oh <my laughs> he's God. like i'm done i'm done wow with this. that's crazy but yeah other than that it's you know we've moved three times so like moving all this stuff and that was a adventure right but we bought this building here now we own this building we rent the other half to competitive cheerleading so this is basically like this is where it started this was a garage. Yeah, one of the owners. This was his garage. And then we brought some parts in and sold cars out of that garage. Wow. Then, I mean, then we were able to. Then in 2007, we bought. There was rocket chassis here, because that's what the next step was. Is like if there was problems and we needed to fix stuff and right. we needed to do it right, we needed the stuff to be able to do that. Well, it was <clears throat> one. They had the building and they had all the stuff, so we had the rocket chassis. This was in Cedar Woolley, so we did that and then. The next one we needed, we basically that was four thousand square feet. We ran out of room, so we're like, "Oh man, we're gonna get like six thousand square feet." And we moved in there, and we're like, "Oh man, dude, this is so huge! Like, look at all this space." I'm pretty sure two years after that, it was like, "Oh man, what are we gonna do?" And now we're stacking stuff and building stuff to like store wow. stuff and this and that. And it was like we're gonna have to do something else. So all these were like, this was in Bothell, which was south of here, but these were all up kind of more up by Skagit Speedway, up by the track. And then it was, you know, we were looking to, actually, Clint, Clint sold us the building. So we were looking for a building, and there wasn't much up that way at the time of anything that was this size. You know, we're 10,000 square feet now with the option to be able to be 20,000 square feet if we needed to. So it was one of those things where it was like, you know, and I live four minutes from here. That's way better. So I don't see the freeway. I don't drive on the freeway. I just drive four Pay minutes. Pay those high gas prices. <laughs> yeah, you know, like I just... It. Yeah, you're in Washington. You're paying real gas. Prices, yeah, you know? yeah. So, yeah. So then, uh, you know, we moved here, and, and it's been good. You know, obviously, it'd be nice to be closer to the track for situations where guys wreck or need parts and all this. But we all kind of, all majority of us live down here, so we can swing by, pick stuff up, take it to the track, or, you know, whatever needs to hmm. make that happen. But And so th is that this building, or is so that th that th building? This was the Burlington building. This was the back. This was the last one we were in. We, we got to update our pictures, because it says, see how it says present? Yeah. Yeah. We've been here for like five years. Oh, God. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> Horrible. And these are trophies? Yeah. Brady Bacon? So, so, yeah, different little different things. Championships. Like, yeah, Brady's. This was our first ever win at Knoxville, which was also an outlaw show with uh, Jack Hodenchild. Okay. Um, Brady's USAC Championships. He's won it enough that we got a little bit of everything. This is this is my big-time trophy here when I won Clay Cup. Oh, oh my. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my. Clay Cup. Yeah. Micro? Yeah, six hundred. Wow. Yeah, and then this is this was uh yeah this was Logan's, Red River Valley. Yeah, I, think, I can't remember what it. That's what I think it. No, I'm trying to remember what it was though. It was so, oh yeah, fortieth career win. That's what. It oh was. okay. Fortieth career win. Then we got our little million million dollar, dollar check with our hat. Nice. And Aaron Reitzel with his all star championship. All star. We did that. Oh, yeah, three years in a row with that. Some more Brady. <clears throat> this was an outlaw show. Well, what the hell is this? Oh, we'll get to that here in a second. Oh, my God. <clears throat> outlaw win with Hod. This was our first ever outlaw win. Paducah. Oh, wow. With the R19 with Hod. Then he won when he was here. 
at Skagit. This was like a Thursday night win, a trophy cup with Jason Solwald. Oh, wow. So they gave, they gave, got us a trophy for that. Most of these are just replicas that they get made, right? Mm, but, probably. <clears throat> yeah, and then, oh, I got to show our big uh, manufacturer of the year because we don't. 360s. We, we, don't, we don't get much love, but, you know, every once in a while we win something. Right. But, yeah, so this is basically here. This, this looks like hell on this earth. Is, this, is, this is what you got to get done. Oh my! Yeah, I saw laser shipping, yeah. assembly, welding, fabrication, CNC yeah. schedule. Yeah. So you get to get mad at somebody if they don't stick to the yeah, schedule. Basically. Do you yell at people every once in a while? Okay. But yeah, this is all just well, it's a Costco list of what we need to do or stuff to be assembled, stuff to laser, stuff shipping out to go, stuff that Mel's working on in fabrication, stuff that I'm working on in welding. Wow. If we got a body mount, if we got cars that powder coat, we you know we powder coat and do all that stuff, body mount stuff. So if that stuff's there, done or ready to get done, right? We uh, it'll all be on there, and we all have, all the computers are. You just click, hey, this is where this is at, or this is where this is going, and then they make it happen. Wow, these are all just catalogs over the years. Oh, Brian Monteith. Yeah, that's yeah, I think nice. this this was a, this was our first one ever, and then. And then, yeah, Jerry Parrish and Monty's car, they were probably the first one to give us a real shot. MPA, probably. MPA, you know, where they bought six cars, I think, the first time they ordered, and, and they ran them forever. And it worked. Mm -hmm. And then this is the showroom. Yeah. Did you design this, or did some no, wife design no, it? We got women for that. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, we, uh, you know, we just found some random, basically, <clears throat> we were never a full retail shop, but we've always had lots of parts and components and pieces and stuff like that to where, you know, if a guy in, let's say, North Dakota, where there's probably not that many speed shops or something, right, and a guy in North Dakota wants to buy a car, well, shit, if you buy a tank and a rear end, you're already paying that pallet freight to get that car there if right. you add this stuff on to it. And then I was like, hey, man, we should do that, right? So we started offering all this stuff. Well, then it just became more of a, you know, we got so much inventory built up over time that guys started coming here and like, hey, we know you have this. So, like, can we buy this? And I'm like, what am I going to tell them? No. Like, right, right. Yeah, I'll sell yeah, it. Yeah, I guess North Dakota, their closest <laughs> guy would be like Gunderson down yeah, there. Yeah, you, you know, know, like it's, there's a lot of, you know, there's probably people even in California where, you know, I, like. Hearst like, opened up something because well, Northern California was so yeah, far like, away. Like you know? Dan Mene is a customer of ours and he lives in Fort Jones, which is like Wairika. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. like like you kind of go maybe to like Medford if that guy has enough, you know. But it's like then you got to go to a place where they ha have enough stuff. You know, there's a lot of speed shops in this country that have some stuff, right? Or they can get you some stuff, or you know. But we want to have it. We want to, you know. I probably have twenty something rear ends here. I have, you know, with different options and stuff like that. I sell, you know, tanks, and every tank we have, we have five, six of them at all times, you know, and we just having the stuff and it's the number one rule in sales if you're going to sell something you got to have it right so that's why we do it it's ultimately for us is if you come in and you ask for something you know if a guy comes in and he wants a kirky seat and he knows what kirky seats he want if i don't have it i'll tell you hey man i'm gonna be a week i'm gonna be two weeks and i could have it here for you if you want to wait if not you know you're gonna have to go find it somewhere else right? right but if you want it i'll get it and i'll make sure i get it and i get it in and then they're happy that way too so it's uh you know, you can't always have everything, but at the same time, that's what we're trying to be. Okay. Well, I figured we should come in and see what China's doing. Yeah. You know, undercover yeah. spy you are. Yeah, I think right? that's what it is. Yeah. Is that what it is? Undercover? Yeah, yeah, totally. CIA? Yeah. Okay. I, I employ like 15 Americans. Oh, well. So that balances it out? Right. Right. <laughs> this is okay. how we ride. This is how we do. I must lie.